Kudu is going to walk you through the process of building a timeline in Omeka. So the reason you might want to do that is to display sequentially over time uh, a series of related items or events. So in my example here, uh, different stages of the building of the Detroit Windsor Tunnel. Uh, of course, in your examples, it might be uh, specific events that occurred in, or specific shows when they happened or when albums were released. There's lots of different ways you might tackle uh, a timeline or reasons why you might tackle a timeline. And you can see here, I can basically grab the years and scroll through and see when different uh, events may have happened and been plotted on this timeline. And if I click on one of them, uh, I can pull up some more information and actually jump over to the record. Now, I don't really have much in my item records here because they're just for examples. Um, so hopefully there'll be something a little bit more interesting in yours. So in order to build this, uh, essentially I use the neat line time uh, feature over here, not neat line, just so you know. Uh, make sure you're using neat line time. So if I click on this, you can see there's my sample timeline. Now the way the timeline works is that it is pulling in information from your items. So what it wants to do is it plots items that have been given a specific date. So it's important to look and see that the date information on the items that I want to plot uh, has been entered correctly. So if I look at mine here, I'm going to click edit. And I scroll down and I see that I've got a date uh, that is going to be the information that the timeline uses to pull this item in. So this is how you have to format it, year, month, day, separated by dashes. And as long as you do that, your timeline will be able to pull in this item. So jumping back over here, the way that the timeline pulls in items is through the item query. Essentially what you're going to do is set some parameters for your timeline for where it's going to go looking for the items that it's trying to add. So in my example, I used the collection I built, which was timeline example items, and you can see all the other collections that have been added to the site are already there. And this is probably the easiest way to do this, is to have a collection that contains the items that you'd like to appear in the timeline, and then you can search by that collection. So what I would do now is search for items, and you can see that it pulled in my item on tunnel planning and then if I scroll down a little bit uh, the tunnel building begins. Of course you'll probably have more items uh, to add to your timeline but uh, this is just an example again. So you can see that there are other ways of uh, sifting for information. So you can use other aspects of the metadata. So if there is something by a specific publisher that you want to just look at items that are related to that publisher, or if there's a common subject, there are other ways that you can sort or have your um, timeline search for items. So it doesn't have to be a collection, but that is one simple way of doing it. And you can mess around with that and see which works best for you. So one more time, uh, I'm going to take a look at the public page for this. And you can see I've got my two points. And one thing to note is that uh, you can scroll through your timeline either by month, so it moves more slowly, or by year, so it moves more quickly when I do that. So of course, the advantage of that is if you have a lot of information that's spread out over a long period of time, sifting by years is going to be helpful. If you have a relatively compressed period of time, then you can do it that way by month. All right, that's about it. Thanks.